If you're LGBTQ plus or know someone who is, our new project, Queer Lay, is for you. I'm lead reporter Caitlin Hernandez. Join me and let's tell our stories of queer joy on the LA Report on LAS.com slash queer LA. Hi, this is Suzanne Watley. Before we start, I need you to know that we are in the middle of our June fundraiser. The reality is, LAist is facing a funding gap that could affect the way we plan ahead for another year of important news coverage. We rely on people like you giving what you can to support our newsroom and this podcast. Your contributions really add up, so join today to protect your independent nonprofit source for trustworthy local news. Give now at LAist.com slash join. Thank you. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, movie and TV actors have given their union leaders the okay to call a strike if there's no new contract with Hollywood studios and streamers by the time the old contract runs out on June 30th. LA County supervisors today voted to set up a commission to make sure county policies don't exclude the needs of LGBTQ plus Angelinos. And we have a big story for you. If you like to ride LA Metro buses and trains, you're getting a break in cost. It's Tuesday, June 6th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LAist 89.3. You already know that the Hollywood scriptwriters who make up the Writers Guild of America are on strike. Pretty soon, the producers of movie, TV, and streaming entertainment could be facing another strike from by a big Hollywood union. SAG-AFTRA says 98% of the movie and TV actors it represents have voted to authorize union leaders to call a strike when their contract runs out on June 30th. Contract talks begin tomorrow between SAG-AFTRA and the AMPTP, that's the Alliance of motion picture and TV producers. The strike by the Writers Guild has already hampered movie, TV, and streaming production. A walkout by actors would stop all of it cold. Here's more news on the Hollywood labor front. The LA County Board of Supervisors today voted in favor of a resolution supporting striking script writers in their battle with the studios and streamers. Here's Supervisor Lindsay Horvath. We urge AMPTP to come back to the negotiating table in good faith and find a just resolution to the strike by paying workers, providing consistent assignments, and providing a working environment that allows them to thrive. The resolution, backed by all five supervisors, says the Hollywood studios have made almost $30 billion in profits from 2017 to 2021. L.A. County supervisors also voted today to set up a commission that will make sure county policies do not exclude the needs of LGBTQ plus Angelinos. Supervisor Hilda Solis says L.A. County needs to stand up to anti-LGBTQ plus policies introduced across the country. Details from L.A reporter Caitlin Hernandez. The 15-member commission will advise the county and departments on things like policies, training, and budgets, and provide reports on LGBTQ plus issues and discrimination. The expectation is that transgender, non-binary, and other marginalized identities will be included in the group, which will mostly be appointed by county-wide elected officials. The motion from supervisors Hilda Solis and Janice Hahn comes during Pride Month and anti-gay protests, like last Friday's demonstration against a Pride Assembly at an elementary school in North Hollywood. Meanwhile, in Orange County, the Board of Supervisors also voted Tuesday 3-2 to two, to pass a flag restriction on county buildings. Supervisor Donald Wagner says the motion was in direct response to a request to fly a specific flag this month, stopping short of naming the pride flag directly. For LAist 89.3, I'm Caitlin Hernandez. The L.A. City Council today called on city departments to start sketching out how an Office of Unarmed Response would work. Now, we know the basics. That office would dispatch teams trained to calm down tense incidents rather than have armed LAPD officers do it. The idea is to avoid fatal police shootings. The city of Los Angeles already has several programs that work on suicide prevention, gang prevention, domestic abuse. They'd all be placed under the Office of Unarmed Response. So the trick is how to make them all work together and work with the LAPD. So that's what the city council wants to know by the end of summer. Speaking of summer, 
You know it's going to be hot, and that's why the L.A. City Council's Unisys Hernandez wants to require landlords to put air conditioning into their apartments or condos. She's asked her council colleagues to back the idea, but first, she wants a city staff report back on how it might work. One is to do an analysis on what the potential cost would be to figure out how we can subsidize or how we can support the cost onto tenants, onto building owners. We just want to make sure we can implement this without it being a heavy cost on folks. Hernandez says the city of L.A. wouldn't necessarily require landlords to install central air conditioning. Maybe an air conditioner in a window would work or some other way to cool down a home on a hot summer day. Along the same line, State Senator Carolyn Menchivar represents some places that get really hot during the summer and fall, San Fernando Valley. She's introduced a measure to ask schools to find ways to get kids more shade on school playgrounds, more trees, less burning hot asphalt. On a 93-degree day in the San Fernando Valley, the school asphalt got to 145 degrees. I have parents, moms who talk to me is that they go from one um, place of no shade, they'll pick up their kids, go to the bus stop, and wait for a bus that has no bus shelter. Bus shelters with no shade, that's a whole nother thing. Senator Menjivar's SB 499, the bill to find a way to get shade onto school playgrounds, has cleared the state Senate and now heads to the California Assembly. After a break, LA Metro is cutting the cost of fares for frequent bus and train riders. Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso, which has won back-to-back Emmys for Outstanding Comedy Series. At the end of this podcast, you can hear comments from Ted Lasso actors Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple. Ted Lasso is streaming on Apple TV Plus. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. L.A. Metro says it's moving to what's called fare capping. L.A.'s reporter Mike Rowe says that's good news if you ride Metro buses and trains a lot. If you ride Metro, especially if you use a pass, you'll want to take note. The public transit agency is doing away with passes in favor of a new fare capping program. I'm Mike Rowe. Starting July 1st, you won't have to pay more than $5 a day or $18 a week. As long as you use the same tap card to pay for your trips, the system will track how much you've spent that day. Once you hit those limits, the rest of your rides are free. According to Metro, its new system is meant to be simpler. Some prices are also coming down. A day of rides will cost $2 less. A week of rides, $7 less. Metro's original proposal would have seen higher prices, including raising base rates. But they made changes following a public hearing. Those changes have also lowered Metro's projected revenues by nearly $30 million. For LAist, I'm Mike Rowe. Not sure if this is reassuring, but here we go. Researchers at the Cal State Long Beach Shark Lab say we've all been swimming pretty close to sharks along the Southern California coast, and it's been fine. They use drones to watch 26 beaches for more than two years with a special eye on southern Santa Barbara County and central San Diego County, the two places where juvenile white sharks tend to gather. Here's what they found. No shark bites, even though sharks swam close to people nearly every day, and they defined close as 50 yards. Yeah, that's pretty close. Thanks for listening to The L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. The L.A. Report is produced by Michael Cosentino, along with producer Libby Rainey. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. Join us again tomorrow for The L.A. Report. You can read more at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or just listen to the radio on 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible. So please become an LAist member today at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.
Support for LAist comes from Apple TV Plus, presenting Ted Lasso. Here's Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca Walton. She became the owner of the AFC Richmond Football Club after her divorce from Rupert. Rupert's the love of her life. And she'll have a stronger day and then a weaker day. And it's because she had wanted that with him and he chose. She cannot have Rupert steaming out in front. She cannot have it. And there's even a point where she goes to Ted's room and says, you know we have to win this. Like, trying to be cool about it, but make sure we do. And Ted, in his usual way of saying, look, you've already won because you've become a stronger person and seen the light. And she's like, yeah, 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 beat them. Juno Temple plays Keely Jones, a model turned public relations consultant for the team. In season three, she gets a girlfriend, her PR firm's financial backer, Jack. Throughout all the seasons, it's very clear that Keely is bisexual and has spent a lot of time hitting on Rebecca. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be a fun one to play out because it's cool to have her, you know, have a romance with a woman that's another strong, independent woman and getting all this done herself. I think they're going to definitely feel a lot for a lot of the different characters. Rebecca's storyline, Nate's storyline, Ted's storyline, Roy, Jamie, like all these characters that are still going through these really... Com Sam, Christo, and also Zava coming in and kind of shaking everything up for a minute. I just hope as an actor that I bring what they want from me, you know, because I think Keely's a really precious character. I love her a lot. She's taught me a lot about being kinder to myself. I'm definitely my own worst enemy, and I think she's somebody that really helps people to see the best sides of themselves. That's Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple from the Emmy-winning Apple TV Plus original comedy series, Ted Lasso. Ma, pa, te presento a mi novia Luna. Hola, mucho gusto. Eric Galindo, co-host of Wild here, and this season, I'm going to tell you a fictional love story. The type of story that feels like a movie. It was inspired by my life. The woman I was dating, off and on again for a minute, comes to me and says she wants to move to Milwaukee. You're looking at the newest anchor for YWCC News, baby! I'm going to be the face of Milwaukee's leading news source. It was a road trip adventure across America. I was steeped in love and in one of the most confusing relationships of my life. This is a Southeast LA rom-com. It's the kind of fictional audio drama that forces you to confront parts of yourself. From Alias Studios, listen to Wild Season 2, I Think I'm Falling in Love. Catch the new season on NPR One, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.